So what do I think about carnivore? Well, overall, I think it's fabulous. It's life-changing. It helps give me options. I can choose what I want to eat. I can choose the proteins. Hey guys, I want to welcome you back to week 22 of my weight loss. This is also day 31 of my carnivore adventure, and I have some amazing details to share with the rest of you. So I started practicing carnivore 30 days ago, and it hasn't exactly been the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. So yeah, we got a lot to talk about. It's one of those things. I, when I started carnivore, I started literally on the fence. I didn't know if I was going to like carnivore or not because just eating meat didn't sound so hot at the time because I was still dramatically addicted to carbs and stuff like that. Uh, fruits and vegetables and yeah, letting go of bread. That's a sad thing for some people, but after time you eventually get over it. So let's get on into the weight loss aspects of this week's video and we'll get that completely out of the way and then we'll discuss more on the topic of carnivore and what I think about it. So every Saturday I like to do my weigh in. The first thing I do is I hit the bathroom, take care of myself and then automatically my cat leads the way on out to the scale. This has been a weekly event for my kitty and me and sometimes she wakes me up at odd hours just to get me out to get my morning routine taken care of, get on the scale. So we're gonna get this scale set up and we're probably gonna tear it out. Oh, everything looks good today. So we're gonna get on here and see what this week's weigh-in's gonna provide for us. All right, we're looking at 320.9 pounds for the week. Yep, okay, 320.9 pounds for the week. That's what we're gonna call it. All right, so last week's video, week 21, I lost about 3.6 pounds last week. Uh, let's see, this week we're looking at 323.9 pounds from last week minus 320.9 pounds from this week. That's a total of three pounds of weight loss, eating pretty much whatever meat products I wanted. And I did have a couple minor mistakes. It's not a huge deal. And I did talk to several carnivores, like 10 year advanced carnivores that are just eating meat. They've been eating meat for over 10 years. And I asked them, I said, hey, you know, what? What is normal here is that when did you stop losing your vegetable and fruit cravings? And they, some of them said anywhere from a month to three months. So I feel like I'm well on course. And they also said that after a while, you just stop caring about fruits and vegetables. So we'll see where this road leads. All right. But anyways, 435 pounds minus 320.9 pounds. That's a total weight loss of 114.1 pounds in 22 weeks. Fantastic news. Now let's get on to the nitty gritty of this video, which is carnivore. How much weight did I lose in the last 30 days of carnivore? And today is 31. It's the very early morning and I'm looking at about 8.15 a.m. on my clock. So we're just getting today started. I've already got some bacon going. It's actually done cooking on the stove. And I never realized that cooking a pound of bacon and how many pounds of bacon I would go through in this 30 days. It's just been phenomenal how many pounds of bacon I've cooked. Uh, shared with the family or even eaten myself and yeah according to traditional health we should have been dead already because i eat a ton of eggs as well uh, but anyways how many pounds did i lose with carnivore okay i started this carnivore adventure i believe it was week 16 when i started it so we used that weigh in that week's weigh in at 335.6 pounds minus 320.9 pounds of this week that brings me down 14.7 pounds in just 30 days of carnivore. And it's not perfect carnivore either. And I don't expect anybody to be doing perfect carnivore. And if they claim that they just jumped right on the carnivore and they didn't have any cravings, they didn't have any slip ups, I call foul on that and I don't believe you. But you know, there are the few, like the 1%, maybe 0.0001% that might actually accomplish this. but. If you want to attempt carnivore, please remember, it doesn't matter if you're doing keto lifestyle, carnivore, uh, vegan lifestyle, you're not gonna be perfect from day one. That's all part of the transition process and we all need to remember that. So <clears throat> no matter what we're attempting, we're changing things about ourselves from a previous habit that used to be really hard to break. So yeah, it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna do some good, you're gonna do some bad, and we're just trying to make the bad a little bit less each time. So what do I think about carnivore? Well, overall, I think it's fabulous. It's life-changing. It helps give me options. I can choose what I wanna eat. I can choose the proteins. 
Um, it also gives me a community that I can research and bounce ideas off of, like new food ideas, uh, new recipes, um, questions. If I have questions about carnivore, yeah, I'm going to the most experienced carnivores I can find on the internet. And just last week, I did jump in on a live feed. Uh, carnivore Scott, I believe, was his channel name. Very nice guy, super intelligent. Uh, I think he went to school to be like uh, like a weather broadcaster or maybe uh, do some sort of radio type talk. He's, he's very quick. Uh, he's very witty, and he, he definitely knows how to keep the, uh, the conversation interesting and educational, especially when it's wrapped around carnivore topics. So I definitely enjoyed the live feed, and it was good for my own experience because it's something I would like to do with you guys, uh, hopefully help answer questions. or, But I'm not giving out like advice on what to do, per se. I'm just wanting to give out my personal experience so people can understand that hey you're not, you're going to jump into this and you're going to see all these awesome people on the internet all these people that are awesome on youtube i'm not that guy i'm not the awesome guy i'm not going to claim to be the awesome guy what i am doing is stumbling around and bumping into tons of walls as i go and i'm here to tell you this is reality this is what you can expect you're gonna bump into some walls. You're gonna make a bunch of mistakes. We're in this together and I hope to help you and I also help, hope to help motivate you to try to do something better for yourself tomorrow. And if you make a mistake, I'm not gonna haze you. I don't mind being hazed. I've been hazed all my entire life. So it's totally okay. So now with this, everything that's changing with carnivore, like I've been losing a lot of weight, um, but even on my off weeks, I'm losing a ton of inches around this area right here this midsection it's just getting so much tighter that you now i complained on week one about how my how my gut right here at the top was just it just felt full and when i ate a lot of vegetables and fruits and stuff like that this part of my gut felt you know empty and flat and i like that feeling so now that i'm 30 days into carnivore this is actually starting to do what I experienced before when I was eating vegetables. So we're coming kind of full circle here. I'm gaining the experience with, uh, you know, outside help, and I'm also gaining the experience from actually just doing this. It's kind of interesting. But the inches lost along the way have gotten me into a different situation. I have new clothes now, like all my new clothes. My wife bought me this for one of the holidays, might have been Christmas or something like that last year. It didn't fit it didn't fit at all i couldn't i had no bag i had no sag in this now you can see that we got some wrinkles here and there uh the neck's loose before the neck was extremely tight right here but the best part of all is i went to a store it's called duluth trading post and if you've ever heard of a duluth trading post they are extremely well-made clothing but they're also made out of a uh, a fire hose type material and this material is stretchy now these are brand new pants I just purchased from Duluth Trading Post. Uh, I got them for work, but I got them for the main reason that they're a little bit stretchy and I do some high steps once in a while. So if I were to step up like this in traditional jeans, this whole part of the crotch would just unexpectedly rip out at times. So some of you, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that that has happened in the past to you possibly, uh, even sometimes getting in or out of a vehicle, that sucks. Yeah, we don't want to rip up our clothes, especially when we're out and about and then we're just stripped down to our skivvies right in the middle of a freaking job. And it doesn't matter what your job is, if you got way too much ventilation going on down there, it's kind of embarrassing and it's also something we don't want to deal with for the day. But yes, I did get some new clothes and I'm going to put up this ridiculous picture of me. Uh, this is a picture of me in size 36 by 36 lee blue jeans now i know there's different sizes and comparisons between lee's and levi's they're two totally different jeans and lee tends to run a little bit larger than levi if i were to put on a pair of levi's at the same size i don't think they would have fit at all but this is me in a size 36. this is 22 weeks into my weight loss journey i'm down a considerable amount of pounds i'm down a considerable amount of inches in 22 weeks now when i started this weight loss adventure yeah i was 435 pounds but my waistline was up in around the 50s, the 55 area, right in there. I didn't even know it was it was so big. Um, I went out and I bought the largest pair of Carhartt uh, overall type bibs just to wear to work. I mean, that was the only way I could function is having the bibs because putting on any pants at all with a belt, yeah, it, it wasn't really possible. I had to 
you know, unbutton my pants. I had to undo my belt when I was in the truck if I had a pair of pants on. I was extremely uncomfortable. So the bibs took away uh, the lower portion here, right around where my belt light ends, and I was able to, you know, breathe a little easier, move around the truck a little easier. I, I still wasn't comfortable. I'm, I'm a huge guy and I'm trying to get smaller. So on the weekend of week 21, you know, just before we got into that, uh, <coughs> that there week, I decided to make a carnivore themed baked beans. I got hazed a little bit for that. I got some private messages saying, oh, don't do that. Using those type of baked beans is a big mistake. Got it. It's not an animal product. It's got sugars and stuff like that. No problem here. I understand that 100%, but this was carnivore themed baked beans. Now I made a huge crock pot full of these baked beans. There were, you know, I used uh, Bush's baked beans for the beans and yeah, they got some crap and got some garbage in it. I understand that, but this is a product I honestly said in there, hey, I'm just trying to get rid of this stuff. Uh, I'm just trying to make use of what I have and I wanna see what it does for my weight loss for the week. Well, the kicker of all that is, I didn't mention this in last week's video because I wanted to have two consecutive weeks of decent, reliable weight loss results. So last week I lost over seven, uh, three pounds and the week before I lost about three pounds as well. So there's a total of six pounds since I created that video of carnivore themed baked beans. So where is the funny part of all that? Yeah, I thought the baked beans would 100% be a ketosis killer. And the reason I thought that is because nobody else in the family ate those baked beans. Nobody else ate anything in that crock pot. I ate that entire crock pot of beans throughout the entire week of that weight loss. Now, the funny part is, is that I also ate a lot of moose meat. I ate some hamburger, I ate some steaks, uh, I ate some sausages, I ate some cheese. And every week I've been having problems with a little bit of vegetables like onions, peppers, uh, you know, stuff like that. Occasionally I would eat an apple. Um, I'm fine now without eating a banana and other other snacks like that. I, do, I don't want bread anymore. I, I see bread, even Ezekiel bread, even though Ezekiel bread is extremely helpful because it doesn't give you that yuck gut feeling. I, I don't really crave that anymore. I mean, I wouldn't mind eating some, but I don't crave it. It's not like I have to go to the fridge and dig out the Ezekiel bread and make a sandwich. So. I mean, like these things are slowly improving as I evolve through carnivore and yeah, great news. I mean, I'm, I'm doing pretty good so far. I feel pretty confident in moving along with this further. So before I even got started losing weight, I was 435 pounds. You're probably going to hear that a lot out of me because I was 400. That's a big number, but yeah, I was extremely heavy. And since I started this, I really haven't lost any muscle mass. I lost a lot of fat in the outside around. If I have lost any muscle mass, it's been really, really minor to this point. And now starting carnivore has definitely ensured me that I'm not gonna be losing a continued amount of muscle mass. In order to be 435 pounds and work actively in our workforce, you have to be a strong person. You have to have a lot of strength in your legs just to get out of bed, just to walk down the stairs, uh, just to do any basic routine. So I don't care how morbidly obese you are, if you're able to do a lot of things, you're incredibly strong already. You don't realize it yet because you're just surrounded by all this just extra padding and packaging. And just in order to get up off the floor, for instance, it takes a lot of extra energy and it might, you know, make you a little bit winded. I know it made me winded for sure. I was like, whew. I mean, I'd be sweating just like, wow. I just got out of bed this morning or I just got out of the shower and I'm sweating. If you're getting out of the shower and you're sweating, that's actually pretty good because that means some part of your metabolism's working. It's when you stop sweating, yeah, you got a problem and you know your metabolism's just not quite working. So that's when it's time to do a, at least a three day water fast and that'll get everything working again. So what's the most important thing that I took away from this carnivore of 30 days? Well, most importantly, uh, yeah, you need to have the appropriate amounts of fats and proteins and everything just kind of mixed together. Now, some people can do dairy. I can do dairy. I, I'm sorry, I haven't lost the ability to lose weight snacking on cheese. Now, I don't like milk. Milk messes up my gut and creates, uh, yeah, like a Taco Bell experience afterwards and the whole butt blows out. That's another topic, pooping. I'll talk about that in just a second. But 
one of the most important things of doing anything different, like ketosis, carnivore, losing weight, is you need to stay hydrated. You need to focus on your electrolytes. Uh, let's see. I wrote all this down because I knew I was going to forget midstream. Uh, staying hydrated collect, uh, correctly with water, salt, potassium, magnesium. Magnesium, that was something I learned just last week. Now, I've ha I have magnesium supplements, and I'll explain a little bit more in just a second, But and the electrolytes. So when I started getting cramps, I started uh, substituting... Uh, electrolytes in my electrolyte mixture which I use apple cider vinegar no salt now and uh, lemon juice mixed with water and uh, let's say Himalayan pink salt I started using that for trying to correct my like nighttime cramps and I was getting cramps in the middle of the day even at work this was before carnivore now after I started carnivore I was getting some continued cramps and uh, I believe it was Carnivore Scott, he was the one that recommended magnesium for muscle cramps. And I was just like, really? I don't know this? And this is the problem here, is that when you're starting to do anything different, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that we need to learn. And as I'm learning, I'm trying to get this out to you in, in a reasonable way and hopefully explain it well enough that you, know, you guys don't have to stumble nearly as hard when you get started, because there's a lot of you out there, you're just curious about this. You want honest opinions. Uh, you don't want some rock star, superstar telling you, do this, do that, because you know you've tried. I've tried, and it hasn't worked, especially when I hear it from some guy that's trying to sell me a $90 powder in a can. I just, yeah, stay away. Don't don't even offer me those, those sponsorships because I'm not gonna go that route. I'm just not gonna do it. I respect people more than that, and my viewers are more important than, uh, you know, selling my soul to a cheap sponsor that wants to make stuff in southern China somewhere with, with no regulations. But anyhow, back to uh, the poop aspect. Yes, your poop changes like really, really fast, especially in the first couple of weeks. Um, there's some possible aspects of constipation. Now, if you're not adding enough uh, fats, like uh, uh, bacon grease is a fat, butter is a fat, um, connective tissue and animal fat, that's a fat. If you're not adding enough fats into your diet, you risk the potential of getting constipation. And when I first started, I made a mistake. I bought 95 or 90% uh, lean ground beef. That was my main protein source for a little while besides the eggs and uh, anything else I could find around the house as far as protein. And I was instantly starting to get filled up and I was not in a happy situation. I had a couple close calls where I thought I was going to be severely constipated. I tried to alleviate that with a little more apple cider vinegar. I was uh, increasing my magnesium intake in order to uh, hopefully have a normal bowel movement, which did come. It just took a, a day or so. Uh, I didn't have a severe constipated issue, uh, but I did have a viewer respond to me early on when I started this carnivore. He said that, you know, be careful, be careful of that. Uh, because that poor guy or gal, I can't remember if it was a guy or a gal, but you know, they said that they had to embarrassingly had to go to the hospital and get get help for getting all that compacted meat out of their boohoo. And boy, man, I feel for you guys. There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there that are that are telling me a lot of stuff that's personal to them. And and I want to hug you and I want to shake your hand because it, it takes a big person to say, yeah, we screwed up a little bit or we might need a little bit of help or like, hey, this happened to me. So try to avoid that. We want we want good for one another is, is my main focus here. So the poop changes. It gets a little sticky. It gets a little slimy. Sometimes you get a little occasional diarrhea. Now, if you start getting really loose stool, yeah, drink a lot more water. Uh, you know, keep your water intake up, no matter what you're doing with these processes. If you're trying to lose weight, water, water, water. If you're trying to cure your edema in your legs, you gotta drink more water. Stop using the excuse, well, if I drink more water, it's gonna hurt me. It's, you gotta drink at least half your body weight in ounces of water every day in order for any of this to really work correctly. I mean, it's just, and work correctly quickly. That's that's the most important aspect, is I'm all about trying to lose weight with little exercise and do it in a fast, quick fashion. All right, so what are some of the problems that I've faced since starting carnivore? Well, for one, you have to do a lot of preparation. There's a lot of time that goes into it. And when you live in a household that's surrounded by people that aren't doing carnivore, 
um, and you come home from a busy work day, it's really hard to take care of things you need, like getting preparation done. If the kitchen's dirty, you got to start cleaning the kitchen right away. That could take some time. You got to clear yourself some space. Uh, so primarily, I try to get my stuff ready on the weekends when the house is kind of calm. The wife's out on her hunting trips, hunting birds, or going on fishing trips and stuff like that. So I try to get stuff taken care of on the weekends. Um, throughout the week, if I have to, uh, I do boil some eggs throughout the week because I go through a lot of eggs. I go through about 30 eggs every week. And at this point now, I'm going any, going through anywhere from uh, one to three pounds of bacon per week. Uh, let's see, burger pounds. Let's see, I'm going through about four or five pounds of burger meat. And then I'm also eating like different types of steaks. And yesterday I did go out and I bought a chuck roast for the first time ever. Knew nothing about chuck roast until, you know, I heard a lot of talk about, oh, chuck roast is great, it's extremely affordable, it's easy to make. So I seared it up in my cast iron and I, and I tossed it in my crock pot and made that, uh, let's see, last night. Now another thing that I had to run into was uh, I felt like something was missing. I felt like I was missing something in this equation, like I needed something else like just listen to your body your body will tell you hey there's uh, something going on here you might want to think about something I'm not gonna be able to tell you what I am because you know your body doesn't always specifically say what it wants but it does shoot out little signals for cravings and stuff like that so it's like okay trying to brainstorm ideas like like what else could I be missing well Possibly a little bit of vitamin C, a little bit of extra zinc, magnesium, and stuff like that. I take some supplements for that, but not all of that is 100% bioavailable, which is, means we can actually absorb it into our uh, system, and it can be used correctly. So I started poking around online, seeing what you know possible deficiencies I could be going through. And now I'm not in an emergency-type deficiency situation yet, but I just felt like something was off. So I found uh, liver, like beef liver, chicken liver, lamb liver, uh, stuff like that. It has a lot of uh, beneficial factors, just like sardines. When I was doing the sardine fast, uh, sardines pack a really big punch of stuff. So now I went out and I got some liver last night as well, and I made that up for the first time. And I haven't had liver in, oh, it's, it's got to be over 14 years back when I lived down in Missouri. Because down in Missouri, people cook liver once in a while. Uh, women have like an iron deficiency and you can smell it cooking in the house. I love the smell of uh, liver and onions. Just just the aroma in the house just, just smelled so great, but I could never take a bite and eat it. And I didn't know exactly why until a friend of me talked about it and we kind of figured out why. So the liver I'm accustomed to seeing is usually in this big chunk, you know, big animal liver, just plop. Not a whole lot of preparation there. Uh, there's usually some skin on it and some veins inside now if you've ever had you know beef liver there's some really hearty arteries in there that didn't bug me too much last night because i did have one or two little patches of artery in that liver but it wasn't horrible it wasn't bad so you know i muscled on through it now the first time i tried to eat liver it just i put it in my mouth and it was like it's, nope not happening and I tried, I loved it. I loved the smell, I loved the smell of the onions, everything about it. It was just, I couldn't get it past my taste buds. As soon as it hit my mouth, it was just nothing but iron. Now I know with uh, processing uh, game meat and stuff like that, if, if the game meat is a little bit gamey, uh, soaking it in milk will help take, take some of the gaminess out of it. I didn't do that last night and everything worked out pretty good. I took a, uh, a thin slab of liver and I threw it, it's frozen. I got it from my uh, local butcher who is super nice, super helpful. He knows exactly what I'm doing and he wanted to, uh, you know, help me with this entire process because, you know, he knows I'm going to be a return customer and he gave me, gave me some great prices. So always be friends with your butcher and never piss your butcher off because they can give you great deals and tons of great ideas, especially when it comes to something like carnivore. But yeah, he gave me these frozen little liver slabs. And I threw it in my cast iron. Uh, I got the cast iron prepped with uh, bacon grease. And I just tossed it in there and I tossed in some onions. I had only had red onions, so I tossed that in there and let the onions caramelize to release some of the sugars. Now I wanted that in, I wanted that flavor to kind of go right into the liver because I, I like the smell. I like the little bit of natural sugars coming out of the onions. <clears throat> and that helped quite a bit. So once everything was cooked and I separated the onions and the liver, I got the uh, liver out on a plate. 
and I started cutting it up into some pretty thin slices. And the first one I ate wasn't too bad. Um, it did have a kind of a hint of iron, which wasn't the greatest. So I took another bite and it wasn't great either. So I'm like, man, what am I doing here? I need to do something to try to help this process out a little bit. I don't want to be tossing sauces on there because that's just not great. A little bit of barbecue sauce isn't going to hurt anybody, even on carnivore. Uh, but I wasn't wanting to eat my liver particularly that way. So I went and I grabbed a bottle of Redmond salt and I just dumped it on the table just like some of these other guys do. They get their get their Redmond salt and they dump it all over their, their big old cutting, fancy cutting board platter they use to eat their meats. And that's what I did. So I put it on there and I started, you know, taking the liver chunks and I started dipping it in the salt and then eating it. And all of a sudden, just like that, it was easy. It was so easy. And it was almost to the point where I just wanted to keep going. So I wound up uh, finishing off the entire piece of liver without a problem. Now I got two more in there. Uh, I'm probably going to spread the days out throughout the week. Uh, so I might eat my next piece of liver, like say maybe Wednesday, and then do another one next Friday and go get some more uh, before getting out of work on Friday because the, the butcher's literally right around the corner from where I work. So now somebody asked me, would I recommend somebody else to do carnivore the other day? I said, well, uh, there's a lot of aspects to carnivore that I would recommend. Uh, any type of ketosis or health loss, uh, health and weight loss routines, you know, requires a lot of protein. Uh, I don't care if you're doing vegan or whatever you're doing. If you, you get a lot more protein, you're going to become a lot more satiated and you're not going to have uh, a lot of these hunger issues, especially in the very beginning. It's going to take care of a lot of the carb issues and stuff like that because it's just going to make you feel fuller quicker and stay fuller longer. And also it takes a lot more energy to digest all that protein, even if you're eating your protein just at dinner time, like I am. I've been doing basically an OMAD lifestyle where I'm not eating breakfast or lunch or snacking throughout the day. I just come home and I eat my calories uh, from the time I get home to the time I go to bed and that's it. Now that time period is anywhere between five o'clock and 8.30. I'm usually knocked out by 8.30 and then I'm up by about 3.34 in the morning and rinse and repeat throughout the week, even on Saturday and Sunday. This is my typical routine. But no, I wouldn't recommend 100% that somebody dives in, all you eat is meat, all you eat is meat, all you eat is meat. It's so simple, just eat meat. I've heard that before, even from good friends. And I tried to explain to them, I said, man, I understand what you're saying. You're saying some good things, but at the same time, I need to know how things work, the basic mechanics of why things work, because that gives us a better understanding and a better grasp of actually maintaining any type of lifestyle. I don't care if you're doing ketosis or doing carnivore. You need to learn the basic mechanics of how ketosis works, how you get into ketosis, how you can achieve stuff like autophagy. Uh, once you start learning how that stuff works, it makes carnivore make a whole lot more sense. And when you start making sense of things, it just makes it a whole lot easier for you to explain as well to other people that are just confused as you are. Because they're diving in, they're having issues with constipation, they could be having diarrhea, uh, they could be having vitamin C issues, uh, you know, lack of magnesium issues, all kinds of different stuff. Um, lack of hydration, that's the hugest one. I hear it so many times, I just can't drink water. Uh, well, you better learn because you're made up of like 80% water, isn't it? Something like that, 80, 90%. Yeah, we're all made up of water. So it's a good idea to figure out a decent water source and get addicted to that. It's all about changing our addictions. So like say before, I was addicted to carbs. I was addicted to sugar. Now I changed that addiction. I'm addicted to boiled eggs. I'm addicted to protein. Um, just the smell of a steak cooking three miles away, I can just smell it and that's that's the direction i want to go i smell the bakery baking cookies in town oh it makes me feel ill now I, it used to be one of those things where i could like smell the individual ingredients that are being cooked and when i smell the butter yeah i kind of like that smell that's about it but all the sugar and flowers and stuff like that to go into baking cookies even the chocolate uh not so much anymore so that that's a nice positive aspect about getting into all of this here but if you're new to starting carnivore, I suggest, well, yeah, follow along. Don't just follow me. Follow a bunch of other people. You need to get your information from like 24 different locations. And question everything. Question everything you hear is fact. If you hear a fact, all right, question that fact. Don't be like, hey, this guy said this and he's an experienced guy. No, 
don't take that 100%. You need to do your own research. I put that down in my description section on the channel and in my videos. You have to do your own research in order for you to better understand what's going on here. Because without education, we don't have a whole lot here. We're just losing weight like I was previously. I was doing the whole yo-yo up and down baloney. And I was losing weight. I was gaining weight. I was losing weight. And then all of a sudden I ballooned up to 435. Good goodness. Anyways. But my point is, is when I was losing weight previously, I was losing weight under the assumption, okay, I need to just exercise. I need to be the hamster on the gerbil wheel. Well, I have broken that theory with everything I've done up to this point because I'm a truck driver. I haven't lost my weight by doing vigorous exercises. I lost my weight by using this up here, changing my mindset and learning new stuff and being educated on nutrition. I asked my wife last night, I said, honey, where do you think this is going to go for me? I said, uh, I said, I have some schooling available and I might just start looking into uh, health and nutrition aspects of everything. And, and that's an option. I could do that at home or in my downtime in the wintertime when things are slow. I could be taking some courses and hopefully learning how to better help other people. I mean, I like to get the message out. I like to tell people weight loss doesn't have to be hard because it doesn't have to be hard. None of this has been hard for me. It's just been a fact of just learning new things and improving implementing them in a slow process making a lot of mistakes and yeah just bouncing around different ideas learning different things from different people this is all i've been doing and i want to share all of this with you so as always guys until next time